most folks think you have to drive to far away and remote places to enjoy the recreation and natural resources of New York State. But this journey puts that myth to rest. Today we're paddling along the Buffalo River in one of the Empire State's most historic industrialized cities. You know, the waterway, I think, is, is, is to some degree uh, getting a second life. John Spagnoli lives just outside of Buffalo, and as a former employee of the state's Department of Environmental Conservation, he helped to develop what is known as the Buffalo River Urban Canoe Trail, emphasis on urban. Here we get an intimate look at what John calls Buffalo's backyard. We also get a history lesson along the way. One thing we see plenty of are these green elevators. There's, what were they? There's a number of them. And the function of these grain elevators, if you think of the, the location of Buffalo at the, almost at the end of the Great Lakes, at the end of Lake Erie, where these cargo ships would come into, into the area from the upper lakes, loaded with grain, but they couldn't get to New York City. So they came and unloaded here, and then the elevators would store the grain, and then it would be shipped in rail cars to New York City and then back into, into ocean freighters again and either sold in Europe or sold in other parts of the area. So Buffalo was a key spot. Most of them are unused, but for the most part, these elevators stand. They're extremely thick concrete walls. They're very, very difficult to take down and very expensive. So they stand, if you will, as dinosaurs, as a, a memory of what uh, the greatness of Buffalo in the past. Abandoned grain elevators, steel recycling yards, and oil refineries. The river is dotted with reminders of Buffalo's industrial heyday in the 1920s and 30s. But with industrial advances came the risk to the surroundings. Now an environmentally enlightened generation continues to clean up the area, returning it to a healthy recreational resource. So what you have is an attempt to maintain the heritage that's here, but yet try to make sure that we don't offend the river by uh, pouring toxics into it and putting incompatible or incompatible industries along the edge of it. So have the industries had to adapt to make sure they no longer do that, that they're moving all of their waste away? Of course. Federal and state regulations have helped to significantly decrease the amount of industrial contaminants found in the river. And local groups, such as Friends of the Buffalo River, are working toward a further revival of the city's waterway. The Buffalo River is home to a variety of wildlife. It's stocked with fish, and it serves as a great site for outdoor recreation. The realization has to be that our view of rivers 50 years ago, 80 years ago, a lot different than today. And retrospect, a canoe trail that runs down the backyard of an urban area in the backyard of the industry, it's different. 